So if you guys watch all the way to the end of each and every video, you notice we're always asking for, you know, thumbs up, for you guys to hit the thumbs up button, for you guys to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, we always ask you to leave them in the comments. And we do that for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, we want to grow our channel. That's important to us. But we also want to be able to engage with our audience. And, you know, usually we're always responding within 24 to 48 hours in most of those comments. But one of the most important reasons we ask for those comments is that we want to ensure that not only are we engaging with you, but you guys are finding value in these videos and we're giving you um, information that you need, want, request, and can put to use in the field. So today's video topic is going to be all about transition photos. And this is basically derived from a question from Jim Reed. Uh, Jim asked a question that uh, he had about transition photos. And as I kind of answered that in a brief summarization um, of a comment, I realized like it was a legitimate question. And uh, it's a, probably a topic that we need to cover and talk about uh, because I'm sure there's other people out there that have um, have the same questions about transition photos or transition videos. So that's what we're gonna cover today. So a transition photo or video is basically a grayscale photo or video. So it's not in color, but it's not in black and white, like a nighttime image. So it's, uh, it's a grayscale photo. And transition photos or videos happen at specific times in the day. It happens at low light, so it's either in the morning or the evening, where there's enough light, ambient light in the environment for the camera to take a photo or take a video without the flash, without needing the flash. So it's, uh, it's dark enough where there's not enough light for that image sensor to record that data in a color, but yet there's enough light where we don't need any artificial light to capture the image and write that to an SD card. So that technically is what a transition photo or video is. And, you know, as we dive into this topic, um, it does get a little bit complicated because there are, there are some hardware things uh, that are really going to dictate how that camera operates, when that transition photo or transition period is going to happen, and it's very easily manipulated. So one of the things we have to talk about is your light metering system on your camera. So on all the Exodus cameras, you'll, you'll find that on the right side, there's a little window there, and uh, there's a, almost like a white button with some red lines going through. So that light metering system is measuring the ambient light in the environment and telling the camera if, it's, if there's enough light there to take a daytime photo in color, if there's enough light there to take a transition photo, or if it needs that flash, if it needs that uh, artificial light to capture an image at nighttime. So, you know, Jim's question was specifically about field edges. And, you know, one of the things with field edges often are, you know, you're in a big open area with lots of sun. Most of the time guys are hanging cameras back up on the edge. And in the summertime, you have this heavy giant canopy that creates a very harsh lighting environment for cameras. Um, this specific set right here, we're on a, we're on a red oak tree uh, on the edge of this wheat field. And as you could see, if you were to turn this camera around uh, 360, I don't know, this is probably a 10, 15, 20 acre field here, super bright out. But as you get back in this canopy, it's very, very shaded. So the light metering system in the camera is not reading the light in the field. It's not reading the ambient light or available light in the field. It's getting its reading underneath this heavy canopy. So as this camera takes a picture of something 50 feet away, 40 feet away, out into the edge of this field, the light metering system is going to tell that camera that there's less light available than what actually is. So one of the challenges with uh, trail cameras or even running a point-and-shoot style camera, DSLR, mirrorless, whatever, in auto mode is you cannot dictate the shutter speed or your aperture on your lens to allow or adjust the incoming light into a camera. So all trail cameras use um, auto exposure tables. Everything's programmed and set um, to specific numbers. Again, and that's what the light metering system is uh, telling the camera, you know, which parameters that the camera should be operating in. And when you get in these harsh, uh, like I said, when you get in these harsh lighting environments, you can uh, really put some strain on, 
on uh, on your camera. Now it's not gonna, I say strain, it's not gonna damage your camera, but you'll notice a different uh, quality in in your photos. There's opportunities there to be for photos to be blown out. If there's, you know, if you're in a shaded environment with uh, you know a lot of light out in that field. Typically, the camera is thinking there's less light available, so a lot of times your pictures will be what we call overexposed or blown out or hot, uh, and vice versa. If you were out in the open and that light metering system uh, thought there was all the light in the world available, and you were looking into a dark shaded environment, your your pictures would be uh, your pictures would be dark. So that's kind of um, a brief explanation of transition photos in field edges with harsh environments like this. Now. When you start to look at transition photos and transition videos and you kind of, you, even from the same camera, you start comparing image qualities of maybe the clarity, maybe noise, maybe, you know, just how crisp that photo actually is. Even when you compare it um, camera to camera, like brand to brand, the quality is going to be dictated by your image sensor and your lens. So the two things to pay attention to there, and again, this is... Uh, this is going pretty deep, but the pixel size of the pixels on that card or on that um, image sensor are gonna dictate how much light is allowed into that sensor. So the bigger the pixel size on the image sensor, the more light is coming into that sensor. The smaller the pixel size, the less light is coming into that sensor. And then the other thing it's gonna be dictated by is um, your aperture of your lens. So those are the biggest, the two biggest things that are going to dictate uh, the photo quality in you know brand to brand in these harsh transition spots but uh even from identical camera models uh in different sets that you'll you'll notice again you'll notice uh photo quality or video quality difference and that is just based on the actual environment and the lighting contrast between where the camera is and where the actual subject of, of the frame is so um we hope that helps explain you know what a transition photo or what those transition periods are what to uh, you know look for when you're setting your camera up when you're setting these things up in harsh environments it's really 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 tough um, you know to have every picture come out perfect again because you're operating off of those auto exposure tables where the camera um, you know you don't have physical physical control of that exposure time or your, or your aperture of your lens all that stuff is fixed inside your camera um, and it's and it's that's a good thing because it makes it a heck of a lot easier for uh, all you guys out there just to hang a camera and walk away let it take pictures and you know, 99% of the time they, they turn out fantastic. You know, if you were to go in and try to manually program that on your own, it can get pretty complicated. And then you have to take a picture, see what the picture does, and then, you know, making some adjustments. And even, uh, you know, the cloud cover in the sky and how much the sun is out, you know, on a bluebird day is going to affect what those what those photos and exposure times um, would have to be set to, to to make your photos, you know, come out correct. So it's good that they... Uh, it's good that we use auto expo or auto uh, exposure tables. It makes it a heck of a lot easier for you guys. But just knowing this, you know, this basic information about harsh, uh, harsh environments when you're hanging these uh, cameras and getting these transition photos, I think will help uh, a lot of you guys know what to look for when you're setting your cameras up and know what to expect when you're, uh, you know, pulling your cards or getting your photos sent to your phone. So. As always, we appreciate all the support. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. If you have any questions about this topic or any other topic um, you want us to speak on or shoot a video on, drop those in the comments below. We'd be glad to answer all those questions and uh, shoot additional content and videos for you guys. So thank you.